Chazal teach that somebody mourns for Yerushalayim, he sees its simcha. Chaim Belozhna asked the question that how come it's phrased in the present tense? It should be future tense. Right now he's mourning. So we're talking about simcha. The simultaneity of the simcha seems to be a, a, a patent paradox. Chaim Belozhna explained that the Yaakov was inconsolable regarding Yosef, the loss of Yosef, the disappearance of Yosef. Why was he inconsolable? Because the gift of shikha, of forgetting, that the Rebbe Nisham gave to the world so that a human being, after he's suffered the, uh, some great loss, the fact that he can eventually forget is a an erosion of the intensity of the pain over a period of time. That's a gift from the Rebbe Nishon. Chazal actually teach that that gift of forgetting, we took and use it against the giver of the gift, the Rebbe Nishon, and we tend to forget the Rebbe Nishon, who gave us the gift and gave us the gift of life and the ability to, to cope and to deal with what's on our plate. And as has been said in the past by, uh, by some, is that um, you have too much on your plate, get a bigger plate. So we avoid misfortune, pain, but Post facto, we know that the Rebbe Nisham does what he does, the Hashgocha, it's for our ultimate good. Delay of short range elation for the later, greater payoff. In the interim, if we, Loa Lenu, are in a mode of, of pain, of suffering, then we have the capacity to deal with it as over time is a healer, as the cliché says. Clichés, we've tried to point out in the past, that a cliché is something that is no longer has, it's not, no longer diction and syntax with vitality, but it became a cliché because it's carrying a core, a kernel of truth. Let's take the kernels of truth and revitalize them. That's Lahavdil, a primary difference, one of the primary differences between literature and Lahavdil Chazal. Is Chazal is always new, it's always fresh, because the language is a language that's invested, saturated in. Ruach HaKodesh in the spirituality of Nevoah. Dimensions of Nevoah, because even after there no longer is prophecy in the world, as some of us have noted in the past, the Ramban teaches that Chazal, the language of the Daf Gemorah, as incorporated, edited, redacted, First Yehuda Anossi, then Ravina Ravashi, is immersed in Ruach HaKodesh. And it's our contact with that Ruach HaKodesh. And so, if Chazal used that lotion in the present tense, there's a rationale for it. It should be Yizke Yira, he will see in the future some date. Says Rav Chaim. Yo Yaakov was inconsolable about Yosef because there was, he was still alive. So the gzeira, that decree that a mess is nishkach minalev was not applicable. 
because he was still alive. Similarly, if we continue to be misabel over the loss of the base Migdash, it means it's alive, it's imminent, that base Migdash Shlishi, which will come in a Shemayim and will last and will be indestructible. It's alive. And that means now, if I continue to be misabel for Yerushalayim, I feel it and sense the inconsolability, then means that it's alive. And if it's alive, there's an element of simcha there as well. Perhaps you could take it another step, is that maybe that's one of the one of the Nimokim, one of the reasons why Tishabov is called a moed, it's called a holiday. We don't say we don't say Tachnon. Seems to be again very, very counterintuitive to refer to this day of devastation again and again through the generations. Beginning according to the Zohar with the Es Gid Hanoshe Bigimatria is Tisha Ov. That, that wrestling bout which we taught, that brought the Mephoshim bring the Mekiris in Chazal, that it was the Taimchei Torah, the supporters of Torah, the leadership of Torah, in the generations were impaired, would be limping because of that original grappling, wrestling with the Malach of Esau, Yaakov and Esau, which will be a continuing, ongoing contest, wrestling bout throughout history. Could it not have been like that? Yes, depending on free will of the, the people involved at any door representing the progeny of Yaakov and Esau. And Klaidisov's vulnerability is always heightened by their failures in the Medrash says that the, as far as the destruction of the Beis Migdash, it was kemach tochun, it was flour that was already ground down that they, that they in fact ground because we wouldn't have been vulnerable had we not failed spiritually, which took away our shield. So there's a moid in the sense that it's alive, though. That third base Migdish is, is coming. Be'ito, and it's come in the outermost date. But achishenu, I can make it happen sooner, earlier, as the Novi teaches, and we understand through our sages that it's in our, it's within our realm. That's why there can be such a, an extraordinary statement that every door that Mashiach didn't come, it's, it's as if the base Migdash was destroyed in that door, if it wasn't rebuilt. It could have been rebuilt, might have been rebuilt. What's the individual capability, culpability, capability under such circumstances? Difficult for us to know, but the only the Rebbe has that calculation. But there is a certain absolute auditing of what the door could have been and what each individual could have contributed to the door fulfilling its mandate to the maximum, to the ultimate. And perhaps another, another dimension. Zeche present tense, right now. There's a simcha of the inconsolability. We're still mourning. 
Yes, but I, I take a kind of a bittersweet sense of appreciation of the morning because I have the, again and again, we come back to this theme, the tools, the equipment, the arsenal to do battle with. It's not melancholy. It's a sadness that, as it were, the, the extraordinary, extraordinary audacious mode of my sympathizing with the tsar of the Shekhinah, that right now the Shekhinah suffers when Klai suffers, and right now I'm focusing on that, and I, we, Am Yisrael, don't have the resources that they need to do what has to be done to extend and rejoice in the Achtus of Am Yisrael and in the that quote Shemayim, that Kiddush Hashem for which we were put here, Hakol Boro Lechvoide, that opportunity is there. But right now the Hakol means that the opportunity to mourn and do it accordingly in the manner in which it should be done and this very inconsolability testifies to an element of now, nowness in it. Like the famous story which we're not sure is apocryphal or has actually happened, but often attributed to Napoleon riding around Paris and seeing Jews on Tisha B'Av sitting in the yard of the shul and with candles on the floor inquiring as to what was going on and then after it being explained to him saying they'll make it back. If they can continue to mourn something which is over 800 years earlier, then there's no question that they're going to make it back. And so, there's one dimension. Perhaps another dimension is the, another piece of the mosaic is kishem, just like we, we add Simcha in Adar, we memayat, we reduce the Simcha in the month of Av. What's the Kishem? What's the correspondence between the two? Maybe we might understand it that other, the month of Adar, we're the Simcha. Already the beginning, moving towards, towards Purim. We're adding Simcha, intensifying Simcha. That Simcha, nevertheless, as long as the base Migdash is not yet rebuilt, there must, cannot be a Hesach Hadas from the Churban. There has to be a corner in the heart and mind, in the mind of the heart and the heart of the mind, of a certain kind of Avelus. Bob is man, that is Simcha. Dominant? Yes, the dominant reality is the Simcha. But there must be a corner of one's heart and mind <coughs> dedicated refusing to relent to connecting to the Zecha L'Churban. <coughs> Perhaps, then, the mirror image of that is that when the month of Av comes, it's a mirror image that Avelus, the Tsar, of Klai Yisrael, the Tsar of the Rebbeni Shlelem, Kavayochel, as it were, that Meshe Rabbeinu talks about the war of Midian, the Nekama, the taking revenge for Kvod of Klai Yisrael, quoting the Rebbeni Shlelem, 
But when Moshe Rabbeinu talks to Klal Yisrael, he talks about the Nakama of the Rebbeinu Shleilam. Similarly, we talk about our tzar, but we should segue into the empathizing, as it were, Kavayochel with the tzar of the Shechina, because Klal Yisrael is the tzar. And so, that's the Avelis, the Avelis of Klal Yisrael. But there's a kind of sense of nowness that there's a corner of Pina, a Daladamas, of Simcha that's reserved in the Koralai Moyed. It's a Yantav. Why? Because Zecha Berea, present tense, the Simchosa. Why? Because it's in, I'm inconsolable. Klai is inconsolable, yet reaching and stretching for the ultimate Gula. By Yisrishon, we taught there were the Shloshaveris Chamuras that the Klai Yisrael had, had failed, and yet that, that base Migdish came back just after a short period in Bovel. Klai Yisrael then go into Golas by Yesheni, and it lasts and last, and last, and we're still in that Golas. The first Golas seemed to have been, the first Chuban seemed to have been Chuban bias of much more principal failures spiritually, the Shlosh Averis Chamuras, Avedizora, Gili Arayas, Shvichas Domim, adultery, idolatry, and murder. And yet, comes back somewhat quickly, incomparable to the extended golas that we're still living through in our time, from Bayez Sheni, from the second, which was what, for whatever, Sinas Chinam, the Jews despising each other, Jews losing their sense of afters. That's what the that's what the base Mikdush was all about. It was the Hechatimza, the opportunity, the resource, the spiritual nuclear reactor for facilitating creating Achtus, unity in Klayaso. And that very resource then had to be, had to come apart because they were failing in the use of it. Failing in, there was so much that was right there. But if the great baseline of who and what Am Yisrael is supposed to be and what they're supposed to bring to the world is weak, then the structure collapses, as we see so tragically in our times. And so, the relationship between Bayez Rishon, Bayez Sheni, the Meshach Chochma points out on the Haftarah of Chazon, Pashas Chazon, Chazon Yeshayahu, Ben Amot, is that the, if your Averus will be like Shoni, like the, that it'll be Kisheleg, it'll be Kisheleg, it'll become, it can be, it can become white like Sheleg. If they'll be like the, like the inner redness of the dye of that tolas, of that which is the, the 
comes from within, comes from within, then it'll only be whitened like Tsemba. Shelig gets whitened much more brilliantly. The snow is white with a sense of, of a shine to it. The wool is a is kind of an off-white that is it, it's moving towards white. Because if the Averus were internalized, then it takes a lot more to that's to buy a That takes much more to whiten it. By his reason that though the Averus were Hamuras, it wasn't in the Midos, in the personal characteristics, it was external kind of a of a failure of submitting to the influence, the impact of, of the cultures around them and capitulating. Even Achov, who had done so much evil, he refused to give up and to to dishonor the Sefer Taylor. He had a sense of Am Yisrael and the, the specialness of Taylor. And there was a, that Kovara Taylor then stood him in good stead in his ultimate din as well. Kla Yisrael, failing in their capacity to carry their message as Klayoso is rooted in their fragmentation and failure to, to carry themselves as a unit. And that is already in Bayashani. We don't have the Shechina, the presence of the Shechina, there in the same manner that we had it in Bayes Rishon. And so it's incumbent upon us in our times to, as has been pointed out by so many, so much of our leadership, so many Rabonim, Darshonim, that the, it's a time for Avas Chinam. Avas Chinam does not mean that I am relinquishing my critical faculties. It means that I keep them in place, but I give precedence, priority, and weight to that which is positive and the potential sometimes only of carrying on and going further to get to where that every Jew has something potentially to bring to the table. This question of the the Achdus, the Meir Simcha points out that Chazal say that Shalom, they didn't give to Echocha ze eze. It doesn't say ze lize. Ze as a with. Sava Kabbalah points that out on the mitzvah of Teichocha. It says hochech tochich es amisecha. Es means together with. Ito. Similarly here, there are two kinds of Teichocha. There's Teichocha that you hear from somebody who's a Talmud Chochem, who's presenting conceptually in terms of Musa, in terms of Higoyen, of Teireh, is presenting an idea. But sometimes I may think that I'm removed from him, I'm distant from him. He doesn't know what my challenges are, what my nesienes are, that if he would be in my place, 
either my age and exposed to the world that we are living in today and my environment, then who knows? So then it's the peer level that it's there as a, for corrective in behaviorally, it requires collegial, peer level kind of a, of a tikkun, of an amendment. That means that I have a prior responsibility to situate myself where the probabilities will be lined up in my favor. The idea level, not to be mavaza tamidei chachomim, to understand that these ideas, I should be able to take them and run with them, even if I feel removed from that, but the ideas, they were mavaza tamidei chachomim too. So on the spiritual, intellectual level, incumbent upon us to take those divri teira, try and internalize them. On the behavioral level, situate ourselves in a place, in a manner where we're more likely to be able to fulfill what has to be fulfilled. Banisham should give us the the kayach, the schus, to see, to feel, to, the tangibility of the urgency of Achishena, of trying to make it happen earlier. And again, it's piecemeal, incrementally. Every door that we continue to be misabel is another brick in the building that that base megdish. And it's our responsibility, that means it's within our reach. We know what's within our reach if we know it's our responsibility. Shem Yitain, that there should be Yeshua's and Gulas for all of Klai Yosel, the Komokom Shaheim. <laughs>